Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. This is the female guppy from Wednesday. Uh, she was very, very pregnant, and I was hoping to record her giving birth. Uh, but she was not very cooperative. But in the long run, she did actually have a very large number of fry. So I managed to get a footage of that at least. This is just one section of the aquarium that she's in. This is the back corner right by where the lathe is. And that is a, probably the largest grouping of them. But there has to be at least 30 or 40 babies in this tank, which is really kind of cool. And they're all doing really well, which is nice. And one of the things I like about this female is she doesn't really bother the fry at all, which is really cool. You can kind of see her there in the uh, upper right-hand corner. She's just hovering around. And she still looks actually really quite pregnant. Uh, but I think she's pretty much done for now. And if you remember this from a little while ago, uh, this is my separator for vinegar eels. It actually is starting to leak a little bit now, but I've been using it for quite a while, so I'm going to probably take it apart, clean it, and then it'll be uh, re-silicone. It'll be perfectly fine again to keep going, as I like to feed uh, vinegar eels for the first day or two. So on to what I was planning on doing for this video. This is my first attempt at an adjustable air stone, uh, no clog version. And all I did is I took a piece of acrylic pipe and drilled a quarter inch hole through a piece of Delrin and drilled a couple holes in that and I wanted to test them. This, this is one of those ideas that kind of get in your head and you say, wow, this would be kind of neat. And so this is just like, all right, take two seconds on, on the lathe and on the milling machine and this is the first result. I want to see what this would do. So I'm going to stick this uh, with an airline and it does actually give nice bubbles, but <laughs> it's all pretty much the same. I mean, these are just two little holes. I didn't want to drill a, a dozens of holes. I just wanted to have a quick, you know, s see if this is, has any kind of viability. And yeah, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And it will not clog because it's easy just to run a little piece of uh, wire through those holes and uh, then it'd be perfectly fine again. So my next idea was to take the piece of acrylic and run it through the lathe first. Now, you, machining acrylic is, it doesn't work well. It tends, if the blade or the bit is not really, really sharp, it tends to do more melting than anything else. But I got a really nice tight fit, and so I drilled a couple holes in it, and I figured, well, this is the best that acrylic is going to be able to do. So I threw that on, stuck that in the tank. I mean, again, it doesn't take very long to do. And almost all the pipes in the back that you see are this kind of setup where you have a long piece of rigid piping and in this case right now they're just running uh, full out and I wouldn't mind a little bit of adjustability. And unfortunately it's acrylic so it's it's not going to do anything. As much as I want to make that smooth it will never be smooth enough because the uh, extruded acrylic has uh, quite a bit of variability in its diameter and you can't really machine it well enough to make it work. So I figured, well, the best thing to do then is to take two pieces of Delrin, or machinable uh, uh, plastic. It's also called acetal. That's the uh, non uh, like the generic name for it. And I'm just made of uh, two pieces of pipe, hole down the middle, drill the hole through, and I want to see how this is going to work. This is probably the best way of making it as uh, airtight as possible. And you can see it's not really a tight fit. But the nice thing about Delrin is really, really machinable. You can get a very fine finish on this. So I'm gonna stick an air, uh, sto uh, sorry, an airline on this. The other thing I can do, it, it can be done the same way as the other one. I can add uh, a little piece of airline tubing and then attach that to the rigid, and it would be just like the other one. And now the neat thing I noticed at this point was, because I said this is really, really machinable, you can get a really nice fine finish. It is actually also a valve it can be turned almost completely off. And I thought that was really kind of cool. I, my original intent was just to make an air stone that I wouldn't clog, and then I could easily clean it and all that sort of stuff. You know, you know the, the reason for it. And then, it, this is actually marginally adjustable. Uh, it's pretty much, because the hole is really small, it's either on or it's off. But there is a little bit of a fine spot in the middle there where you can have a little bit of air, uh, not quite full force. 
but it's very finicky. So I thought maybe what we could do instead is go to a larger diameter and then machine that so that uh, there's a much bigger hole, first off, and then I, what I can do is have a bit of adjustability to that, which I thought, well, that's kind of interesting as well because, you know, I don't want to go too large in diameter because as soon as you get a, to a, too big a piece of pipe or a piece of Delrin, you're going to end up with having it restrict the flow. I really like this size, but I thought, well, just to test it out, I'm going to go up to, I think it was uh, three quarter inch and then I was going to machine that. I mean, obviously I can machine this down further, but the whole point of doing this is to find something that's simple and easy to put together that I could, you know, run off, you know, half a dozen whenever I want. And because once you have the lathe set up, uh, I'm going to go through some of the process for that in a little bit. It's easy to knock off more of them. So here it is. I'm going to put it in the tank. This is also Delrin. It's just a white version. Uh, so it's uh, just as machinable. But I found this particular time I did, I didn't get it quite right. It was, I can't really shut this one off. And also because I'm not really taking the time when I'm on the middling machine to make sure it's completely parallel, uh, the hole can be a little bit offset from uh, one turn. Like depending on if you, the hole, I, obviously when I drill through the first time, if I match that alignment, it's perfect. But if I go 180, uh, it can end up being slightly out of a line. And then there it's not uh, quite set up. So here you go. That should be the off position, but it's not quite off. Uh, it's close enough. I mean, it's more than enough for my purposes. But as I said earlier, this is too big in diameter, I think. It will end up causing restrictions in flow through any kind of uh, lift stack that I'm going to use. So I wanted to try it out. But the next step, obviously, is to take the thinner diameter and uh, try and machine a larger hole in it. So instead of just doing it, I am going to take you through all the steps. Uh, hopefully you don't mind. So these are just two blanks. I just cut them off. Uh, it's easy to cut them in the saw. It's a uh, very easy uh, material to work with. So I'm going to put this in the lathe. Now, I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole. That's my intent, but I'm going to go one smaller. It's the same reasoning as when I do any other drilling. Uh, it will expand if it heats up too much, so I'm going to take a first a, a smaller uh, bite through this at the depth I want, and then I'm going to run the quarter inch through it, and that should give me a nice homogeneous clean hole. And hopefully, well, actually, I, I mean, I touched the bit afterwards. It wasn't warmed up enough to do anything, uh, so I'm not going to get any flaring in it. I don't want any bulges or any so I want to, I don't want any irregularities in the hole at all, so that it's nice and smooth. So it's pretty easy to do. This is a, like this would be very easy if this turns out to be something I want to do to knock off a number of them, and that's the whole point. Now I'm going to flip this around, and all I'm going to do is machine this down to the size of so it fits on an airline tubing. This is just very straightforward. I'm not sure why I actually put that piece on there. It doesn't really matter. And then what all I need to do this is the first drill that I had um, when I was doing the other side, and it's just going to match up with that hole. And it's going to run it through, so this is going to be where the air supply is going to come in. So this is now the top half of that assembly completely done. And it doesn't take very long. And if I had like four or five of these, it would take maybe 10, 15 minutes to do all four or five. So it is actually very easy to do. And this size of Delrin is actually really quite cheap as well. So this is the other piece. And, this, and what I'm doing now is I'm this is the piston that's going to go through the middle and it's going to machine that down so it has the right depth uh, I want it to fit reasonably tightly it doesn't it doesn't have to I mean it could be fairly loose in there but I just wanted to make sure it seats in all the way that way when I go to adjust it I don't have to worry about it uh, like trying to find the hole so I'm just going to cut that out you can see I'm taking off almost all the diameter here in one go then what I'll do is a couple more passes, each taking off a couple thousand at a time to bring it down to uh, the final diameter. Now you can notice about halfway along this uh, piston area, there's a bit of, you can see a little bit of a line there. That's because <laughs> that side to the right is one thousandth of an inch uh, too thin. It was a bit loose, and I was kind of concerned that 
it was just going to leak, so I backed it off a thousandth. Unfortunately, that part won't be usable, but I just want to run one hole in this uh, as an initial test anyway. I just want to make sure it works at all. So you can see that line there. Uh, if like I was making this, like making these, I would probably end up putting uh, at least two holes, maybe three or four. Uh, it all depends on what I'm going to use it for. But I just wanted to make sure that I want to test this out. So again, this is the same size diameter as the first bit. I just got to run down the length of the piston. It doesn't have to go all the way through, obviously. And I just want, this is where the air is going to go in. So all I'm going to do now is put this together. And you can see it here. This is uh, this part here is actually machined quite well. It actually has a good finish to it. And it's the right diameter and everything. Uh, if I want to do this again, what I'll probably do is just remachine the other one. And it also doesn't have to be that long. Uh, I can shorten this up quite a bit. I wanted to leave it a little long in this particular case because I want to test out a couple of these in a practical situation. I'm going to put them in those under gravel filters. And I want to make sure that uh, it doesn't, you know, pump air underneath the plate. So I'm just going to drill, this is set up now together and clamped in together. And I'm just going to drill through all the way. Now because this is a large diameter bit, I had to be very, very careful to make sure that I didn't end up with an asymmetrical hole. It doesn't take much, but I think I got pretty close. In the end, I think it was probably off by maybe a thousandth or two, but uh, like I said, this is just a test. So there, I'm going to stick this in the water now and uh, try it out. Definitely let me know what you think of these. Uh, like I said, this is just uh, one hole tests. Uh, obviously, I'm going to run two or three or more holes depending upon uh, how I want this to work. And let me know if you like the fine, tiny little holes, uh, the larger holes, uh, whether you like the black Delrin, the thin one like this, or the large and uh, bigger white one. So, yeah, just leave comments and let me know what's going on. So I'm going to fiddle with this a little bit. Because it's a larger hole, it is actually adjustable. This is pretty much wide open. And I noticed as I was running this, because I'm using a larger hole and because I was off by... Uh, probably about a thousandth of an inch. Uh, I can't turn it off. Uh, and that's kind of a uh, no-no for me. So I think the larger diameter hole is probably going to be a no-go. Because I want to be able to knock these off easily without having to spend like hours and hours on the lathe trying to figure this all out. I mean, the total time spent... I mean, none of this is fast-forwarded. So this is actually the amount of time I spent doing this. Uh, I think the video is a little over 12 minutes. So it doesn't really take that long. If you like the style of video, please like and or subscribe. And always leave comments. And I'll cut to them for sure. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And bye for now.